Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the 19th of March, uh, 2014, and we have a guest with us tonight to kind of give us, I've been calling it an update. It's my update, but it's, uh, but there have been exciting things happening in the past um, couple of months, I would say, around um, open badges, and uh, we're going to jump right me. into this. Even re more recently, well, you'll let us know. Um, I'm going to uh, just, it's, it's quite a easy time for me tonight, so I'm just going to back out and let you guys talk. Um, I'm going to say, I, I, I'm, and, uh, but here's, I did think of one way, and this is the, the, the last corny thing I'll do tonight, I promise, but one way for you to introduce yourself. Um, with my students, we do this thing, with this, uh, we do these circles where we ask people to, we ask young people to say one thing they've done, actually done, recently that makes them feel proud of themselves, makes them feel good about themselves, um, and uh, we share that. So as you introduce yourself, feel free, please do, you know, say where you work and all of that, but I'd like you just to say one thing you've done about open badges that makes you feel proud about yourself, feel good about yourself, um, and then um, we'll go from there. And Barry, we're going to start with you, if you don't mind. Oh, okay. Just go in order. <laughs> Not at all. Am I coming through? You're coming through great. All right, Welcome. so hi, hi, everybody. It's great to be with this awesome group of people. Thanks, Paul, sure. for bringing us together, which is one of the amazing things you do with this series. Um, I live here in New York City, where I work at the American Museum of Natural History. I'm the Associate Director for Digital Learning. Uh, and in, your last name is Barry Joseph. I should say. That's right, Joseph. <laughs> and my, my uh, Twitter account is mmmushmi, mumumushmi. You, you can go to my blog at mushmi.org as well to learn about this work. So something I'm proud of recently about badges is that I have convinced my Hebrew school and my synagogue to launch what might actually be the first Hebrew school in the country to integrate a digital badging system throughout its entire system. And their... Um, ownership over it and their awareness of how it can really impact and transform um, learning in the community and the sense of identity has been remarkable in just the last few weeks. And Barry, what's that show that you can do? What? What is the show what's that I can show do? That you can do, yeah. I bring people together and excite them about the disruptive possibilities of uh, digital media and learning. Cool. Thank you. Joe. Joe Dillon, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, sure. So I'm Joe Dillon, and let's see, so I'm from the Denver area, and I work in Aurora Public Schools, and one of the things I've done recently that I'm proud of is um, we've started an inquiry about digital badging in my school district, and so one of the things that they've asked me to do is foster the, the development of pilots. And so I had an opportunity to go meet with a principal in my school district who we work with closely anyway in terms of my department, the Educational Technology Department. But she wanted to, me to run some ideas by her. She said, I'm open to the idea, but I'm not sure what we would do, so tell me how we could start small and give me some suggestions. So one of the things I guess I'm proud of is I, I tried to put together some possibilities for her to, that would suggest possibilities, and so I presented her with three ideas, and I said, the goal isn't that you adopt one of these three ideas and put it into action. The goal is that you give me feedback on each of these ideas, and then we're able to kind of collaborate on what would be a good vision for the school. And so we ended up with a, the idea of a small badging pilot that will take place in a, in a club space at first in April. But we also, uh, the exciting thing is that both the principal and the uh, instructional coach at the building want to be involved in this small pilot. So we're getting the instructional leaders kind of excited and, and involved about the possibilities of badging on a small scale, which is, is a nice way to approach kind of a big district level inquiry, in my opinion. You've got a lurker there, Joe. I saw yeah, that. my daughters like to try to uh, <laughs> photobomb my hangouts. I'll take care That's of this. That's so cool. <laughs> Joe, what's that show you can do, though? I want you to summarize that. Thing. What it shows that I can do is that I can plan for dialogue, and I can also, and, and the di I, to plan for the dialogue in such a way that the person I'm working with has to ideate. So it's not about adopting my ideas. It's about getting at their ideas and the potential that they see for badging in their context. Because I can come with fully formed ideas, but I don't understand that principal's context well until she gives me feedback on the suggestions I've made. Very cool. Now I'm going to show you how I can get rid of my daughter. 
No, no, we we love people. That like, a couple months ago, somebody nursed uh, their child on on the show. So <laughs> until you're doing that, you're okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, Leah, go ahead. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, sure. Hi, I work for Mozilla, and I'm the director of Hive NYC. My name is Leah Gilliam. Uh, I'm Leah at play on Twitter and other channels. Um, Something that's going on with badges right now. <laughs> Doesn't have to be right now. Just that what comes I'm, to mind. That I'm proud yeah. of. Um, I mean, I th I think one of the things that I'm I'm interested in uh, lately is just the just the way that that you know, kind of wrestling with badge systems and thinking about how badges work is really causing people to um, you know, kind of reinterrogate the way that they make meaning, the way that they teach people things, the way that people learn. Um, and you know, particularly in our work um, right now as you know as part of Hive NYC and as a part of a learning network, we're trying to bring together organizations to think about how they can badge around particular commonalities. Uh, so it's been very interesting to sort of to um, you know kind of slice through all of the different things that people have going on to try and find some some sort of some some core issues that people have have in common and for us we're looking specifically at 21st century skills so I think um, one of the nice things that I'm learning about badging right now that isn't uh, tied to you know actually issuing a badge um, is the is the the ways that it enables people to to work together and to think about their own process. process. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, as a as a designer, you don't really get that many opportunities to to work with people closely and have them think through things and 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 sort of change their mind. Often, you're presenting an idea and people kind of respond to it. So I really like this process. You know, I've been working um, you know with a group of you know ten different organizations, sometimes more, sometimes less for the past uh, four months, and it's been a great experience. So, Leah, what's, what's that show you can do? Uh, I think it shows that you can think that you can think with people, that I can sort of think with people um, uh, and, use, and use badges and badge, you know, sort of d design um, uh, as a way to help people, you know, figure out what they're, what they're you know, kind of in it for. What they're what they're interested in in doing together. Very cool. And by the way, we will interrupt each other in a second. But Nate, go ahead. Welcome. Two two shows in a row, Nate. I think you know. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank for you for inviting back. me back. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, and we're going to do a gardening show next week, so <laughs> yeah, I'm, everything as you do is relevant to my interests. Uh, so anyway, I'm Nate Otto. I um, am the project coordinator for the Badges Design Principles Documentation Project at Indiana University. Uh, we're studying how 30 different um, projects that have implemented digital badges planned and then uh, evolved their badge system over that implementation process, sort of packaging these up in terms of general design principles that might be able to be applied in, in new contexts as well. And um, uh, besides that, uh, one thing I've done with badges recently that um, I'm proud of is I'm consulting with the Oregon After School Alliance to see if um, they can get a statewide badging system started. And um, hopefully that, that shows that I could do some of the same things that Barry knows how to do, uh, connecting people and getting them excited about the potential of this technology. Very cool. Welcome. And what's that show you can do? Well, that's what I just said. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. No, no. I, so I hope it shows the same, that I can do the same thing as, as Barry, that I can uh, connect oh. people and get them excited about technology. Actually, I think that's what everybody's saying. It's so interesting. But great. Welcome. Sunny, thank you. You're welcome. Hi there. Um, I think a couple things that I'm proud of. Um, Introductions first. Right? Oh, <laughs> sure. Sorry about that. Um, my name is Sunny Lee. I am the product lead at Open Badges. Um, so I work at Mozilla. And um, I'm familiar with a lot of you guys here. Um, and it feels great to see you guys here. I feel bad for you guys in the East Coast where it's super late because um, I'm kind of already brain dead. Um, and I'm on the Pacific Coast. 
I am proud. Um, I think I think we're going to. I, I'm going to share a little bit about uh, the work that we've done in the past couple of months on something called Badge Kit. Um, one thing that I'm proud of is that um, a lot of times we're just uh, um, rushing to to meet the deadline, and a lot of times the first thing to get cut is. Um, testing and you know incorporating feedback and iterating and all that stuff but this time with badge kit our team really layered in user testing from the very beginning of the product design process so we were able to kind of get a lot of user feedback and iterate based upon that so when we released badge kit last week I this was like the first time I felt really this was I'm embarrassed to say that this was the first time that we had a lot of user testing involved in the product development process and I felt really really good about that um, and what I, was your role Sam, in all um, I, I was the product manager so um, you know I work closely with um, I think a lot of you guys know here um, Chris McAvoy who's our engineering team designer um, who oversaw a lot of the engineering efforts and then Jess Klein again another person that a lot of you guys are familiar with who's our creative lead who did you know oversaw not just the visual design but the user experience also the user testing elements so I was just there kind of plugging in wherever I was needed and it was a really fun um, informative process Great. welcome Thank and you. Cheryl you dropped out there for a second, but we'll circle back to you. Introductions and what have you done around badges? So did we skip over Vanessa? No, we'll get back to her. It's okay. okay. Hi, Vanessa. <laughs> um, I'm Cheryl Grant. I'm the director of social networking at uh, Haystack for the uh, digital media and learning competition, including the Badges for Lifelong Learning competition. And um, what am I excited about with badges? Um, well, all of it. It's all exciting. Um, I, uh, I'm excited about this conference. I just, let me see if I can post it. Um, the workshop, the Open Badges International, first international Open Badges workshop in Estonia. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see the research community kind of start organizing. And that, that was the first sort of, um, I don't know, it made me think, yeah, we're starting to bite. We're starting to bite into this and do some interesting things. Can you say a little more? What, what makes you feel that way, particularly now? Um, I just say the beginning of a field, uh, when you start to see people form research agendas and workshops and conferences, and the theme is kind of standing up on its own, and also people that you may not have ever heard of. I mean, I think a lot of people who are close to Mozilla and close to Haystack and um, we're all familiar with, with a lot of the same people and, and now it's just starting to get legs and get bigger and um, it just makes me feel like it's exciting. It's, um, you know, there's a lot of, I think this kind of goes to Barry's point, we, we'll probably get back to the, the provocative uh, blog post that he, he wrote, but, um, you know, we just, we have to start saying things about badges that um, will help direct the design and, and kind of you know, more chatty type of ways, like based on research and, and um, take some of the stuff that's happening in hallways and, and have them out on stage and start kicking and digging at, at badges in interesting ways. So I feel like that's very exciting. So let's hope we do that tonight. Great. Van Vanessa, welcome. Hi, Paul. How are you? Good. <laughs> uh, lovely. It's so nice to see all your faces. Uh, uh, my name is Vanessa. I'm the learning lead at Peer-to-Peer -Peer University. We built three different plat badge platforms over the past four years. Uh, what am I excited about when it comes to badges? Uh, I was really touched by an experience that Paul had shared today on Google Plus about a teacher evaluating, uh, or a student evaluating a teacher and actually denying the teacher the badge. Oh. Um, and the reason that I loved that moment is because we at P2P are very committed to uh, to peer learning and and the the sort of destabilizing this notion of power expertise and and seeing uh, knowledge as something that's networked as opposed to something that is transmitted from person to person. Uh, so that was a very very cool moment to see, and I can't wait to hear Paul about what happened. Um, <laughs> And uh, and what else? I, I well, what's a show you can do? What do you do in all that? We're getting a little personal here. Oh really? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do I do, or what am I excited about? In the process you just described, what's your role? 
uh, I work on research, design, and assessment. So, uh, so I thought through the pedagogy behind uh, P2PU's assessment program, uh, designed the features to be in keeping with those assessment principles, um, worked with certain organizations like Creative Commons um, and Open Knowledge Foundation to help develop their badge systems, um, and hung out with Paul uh, in his summer Youth Voices program, came to his classroom. Um, so I guess I would say that I, I'm a spunky little learning evangelist when it comes to badges. How about that? <laughs> I like that. That's cool. So, and and I'll t I'll just uh, I was going to use that example, even though it happened now seven months ago. But um, yeah, young woman uh, created a badge called Escape to describe her experience of free writing, um, and then uh, a teacher. We were teachers and students in the same room. A teacher applied for the badge um, using her. Um, journal entries, and the young woman th thought that she really hadn't gone deep enough with her with her free writing in the, in the journal. Unfortunately, it was a summer program, and that was the end of it. <laughs> but um, having said that, I so and and I want to set up the rest of this and then and turn to uh, Barry your provocative post to kind of kick off some of the rest of this conversation. Um, and I do want to say that I don't think of this, if you guys don't mind, as um, you, you spend, all of you spend a lot of time um, working with people who are brand new to badges. And that's not going to be terribly meaningful to you guys. So I want to ask you to feel free to push a little further beyond that tonight and talking to each other. Um, and, and, I, I'll put it, and I want to put it this way. Um, using PDPU's old badge system, I don't know which iteration it was, Vanessa, but um, I, cr I created badges t uh, two years ago now and graduated young people using those badges, um, and they were very much created by me based on Common Core standards and so forth, and then in the summertime experimented with peer-to-peer -peer badging, um, and and now working in a school that is a mastery-based asynchronous school, and so, you know we want to kind of create badges around that. And I don't know where, like the middle between that is still really hard to figure out, right? So I'll put that out like that. And so that shows that I can. Here, here's my part. I shows shows that I can bounce with P2PU when you guys change your badge system. Um, but seriously, um, I mean, th it was really interesting to see. Like, what I'm totally fascinated by PDPU system is the way it, the process that it that it evolves, right? That comes from it. Um, I still don't know how to use them in a school situation in a top-down way, though. So it's very disruptive the work you guys do. So then I'm going to start it there. Um, Barry, do you want to kind of summarize your beef? and then allow that to frame some of the rest of this. And we're not going to go in order anymore. Please jump in and be as interruptive as I know you all can be. Thanks, Paul. So uh, I can frame this in a really short way. I think that the history of the recent public uh, conversation and debate about the value and the impact of, of digital badges has largely been framed by, the, by those on one side who are saying there is value here, there is great potential, we need to explore it, and those who are raising concerns about whether it could be effective, whether there were uh, concerns about internal versus uh, uh, external motivations, um, and, and whether it was um, the right way to focus alternative assessments, and so forth. But as a result, those who have been using badges and promoting badges have ended up intentionally or not arguing out to the outside, which meant, this, which meant that they always were putting out the positive. And I, I very much describe myself as part of that in the blog post I wrote recently and had posted on, on DML Central. And as a result, when I go to a place like the, the Digital Media and Learning Conference last, uh, last week or the week before in Boston, there's a group of people who have been working with badges, uh, and they speak publicly on the panel about all the amazing things that we're trying to do or are achieving, and then when we get off the panels and we sit down with the rest of the folks who are new to badges and trying to figure it out, 
They want to hear what's going on, and then a different conversation happens. And that's a conversation about what isn't working, about what we don't have, or what we'd like to see. And the long and short of it is what I'm calling for in my you know, semi-provocative blog post is simply to say we need to start talking publicly about it. Let's stop just trying to argue against those who are raising concerns about badges, which we still need to think about and address those concerns as well, but let's start talking publicly about what we've been saying privately. And for me, these are things I've been hearing privately for years. And it's a call after hearing one institution after another have these discussions with me and then say, why aren't we saying this in public anywhere? And for the last year, I've been waiting to hear it. I haven't heard it. And it's simply a request to say, let's start talking about it. And again, this is coming from the perspective of someone who loves digital badges, who not only loves what I think they have the potential to do, but have actually seen them achieve. So I'm coming from a position of working from what has worked and wanting to expand that, but knowing that unless we become self-reflective in our public conversations about it, we're not going to be able to move ourselves forward. We're not going to be able to put out uh, the, um, the needs um, that can be met by others who will hear those concerns, and we'll be essentially lying to people who are new to this space about what currently exists and about what's possible. All right, jump in, folks. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll jump. Uh, Barry, it's so nice to meet you. I've admired your work, um, and I've been reading it for a while, and, and I think your post is great. I just skimmed it, and I'll give it uh, some more TLC after we're offline. Um, I hear that your, I, I think your concerns are, are valid. However, at the same time, what I really liked about the DML community is this, uh, is this experimental feel of it. Um, and I think that that experimental feel needed to be uh, uh, positive because, uh, because we wanted to nurture each other uh, to actually take these risks and try things. Within the DML community, Cheryl Grant has done a baller job of bringing us together to once a quarter to share our work and iterate as we go. And within those, within those meetings, we've actually been sharing our concerns and, and, and shortcomings and failings. Um, I am happy to report that uh, P2PU has actually published several blog posts on what if people create bad badges. And our takeaways, um, our takeaways from each iteration of badges are, are up on SlideShare. Um, and I, I think that uh, also what you're tapping into is a sort of coming of age of this community, um, and that is that DML three years ago was kind of pie in the sky ideas, and that's what made it so great. And then the, you know, and then it evolved into prototyping, and now we're actually sharing out what we've made. And the next step will be uh, the next step will be sort of best practices. And uh, and fail fairs and and where we screwed up and where we did well, um, but I would I would urge you to take a look at some of these documents. Um, I think that there and DML has been great about sharing uh, about sharing openly what we're learning as DML grantees. Um, and maybe something Cheryl that to note of that is that maybe we're just not making uh, what we're learning a clear part of the discussion, um, and that that is something that. Maybe we just need to be uh, vocal about the fact that we've done that thinking internally as grantees. Or maybe I'm wrong, too. But maybe there's more public debate going on that, that I'm not seeing, and there's ways that we can draw more attention to it, like you're saying. It's, it's, hard, to, um, it's hard to talk about it in a way that, that you can actually translate those insights um, online. And so then that means where are people having conversations about badges? That's why I felt like seeing this group put together a workshop that I, I mean, maybe at Mozilla people knew about them, but um, I just feel like it's the beginning of, now it's getting outside our community, and I, I will say at the Reconnect Learning Summit, I realized, well, a lot of people are reading things, but they're not commenting, and I don't know if it's a slightly different culture, but um, a lot of people are reading, and I'm sure this is happening to everybody who's doing stuff online, commenting and saying, I read that and that really made me think and so I feel like it is happening. I think um, we had a badge research workshop right before DML 2014 and um, and that's definitely what people want to bite into. They want to have those conversations exactly vary what you were talking about. That's Everybody wants to go to that because nobody wants to mess up what they have and they're excited about this but they want to know how to do it in a thoughtful way and, um, and so it's a really nuanced conversation and it's a really rich one but I don't know how you make that easy to 
share with people like the 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 link that I just put in the chat. Um, if somebody wants to put that into into the Etherpad, that would be great for people who want to take a look. But that's all the thirty project Q and A's of all the grantees, including Vanessa and um, everybody who's been working on these DML projects and. It's taken me months just to condense all of that into emerging themes and you know do do a, a content analysis of that. So some of it is just like you've been doing this for a long time, Barry, and you're 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 ahead of the curve. I think I'm, I'm ready to have this conversation publicly, and I don't think conference organizers are quite there yet. Maybe and maybe we just haven't gotten the materials out, but um, we're catching up. I mean, I was glad to see the post. Oh, did we lose Barry? We yeah, lost he'll be back. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, so I feel like it's happening, but I also feel I agree with Barry. Like I would love to hear, and also I will say to working with um, awesome people like Vanessa, this group, this cohort, you know, telling a group of people it's okay to fail and talk about your failures, that is, you have to be a special kind of person to do that, and, and they did that. They went to these two workshops and took incredibly, I think, piercing feedback from expert panels that we had at these workshops and um, took it right in the chin. And, uh, and then went back out and had great conversations with each other about, like, this is what we think about our badge system. And um, am I not right, Vanessa? Some of that constructive feedback is difficult to take. And, um, and so I feel like maybe you're right, Vanessa. Maybe we just need to now move this out a little bit more so people feel like they, they recognize that there is a very self-reflecting conversation going on about, about badges. There he is. <laughs> we said great things about you, Barry, and you didn't hear any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. I, my computer froze. Sorry about that. So, could I just encourage us instead of uh, saying, "Is there a controversy or not?" What is the controversy? Like, what is the what? What are the um, tough points? I mean, I and and I, I felt that Barry identified one of the tough points that he identified was, um, and for me, maybe I'm, I'm adding a little bit here, but is is the um, I've been saying that the, the, the value of peer-to-peer -peer badging, like students making their own badges, is like jumping over that is kind of odd, I've found. So that, because the other kind of badges that I use end up being not much more than, you know, the grades were. So, um, so how do we, but then, you know, escape might not be recognized by my principal as as a badge that you know is is worthy of English credit, right? So, I think for me that's one of the sticking points. Like the the that whole area between. And I know it's been addressed by some people, but I, I just think describing what that is would be useful. But then also, Barry, in in your post, you talked about that you can't say to kids who come to your museum, get this badge and take it to your uh, science teacher and you'll get credit for it, right? So we don't have that cross-institutional stuff going on yet, but we act like we do. So is that are those two fair points? And yeah. how would you describe those points? Yeah, yeah. so Paul, yeah, one of the things that, that struck me about Barry's piece was I have seen the same sort of pattern of, of these common challenges coming up across projects. I mean, my, my project is studying 30 different badge systems that when they each of them started with the DML competition, they had hardly any precedent to, to build on, and a lot of them came across the same struggles. And you'll see, like, both of the things you mentioned. Um, I could rattle off a few examples of how projects okay. Um, okay. wanted to... Well, okay, um... So, for example, the supporter to reporter program in the UK wanted to have, you know, have some sort of deliverable value they could give to the badges. You know, so that they have students who are sports fans learning sports journalism, and they go through this fairly intensive program where they um, do, uh, you know, a lot of the activities that um, a, you know a real like sports journalist covering, you know, a rugby match or something would be doing. And they'll be down at their local rugby club reporting, interviewing people, writing stories. Producing, um, and they wanted to secure internships for students who earned the, the gold level badges in their system. So they went to some media partners and you know showed them the curriculum and the badges and asked, "Hey, will you give these students a chance at an internship if they um, get through the system?" And all the partners they talked to balked at that, and they they wanted to see the value of the badge 
before, or you know, the value of the those students before they would you know make a promise about them. And in in a way, that's like a catch twenty two where they're you know, the badge system owners wanted to promise some value for the badge, and um, at the, yet they couldn't promise the value because it didn't it didn't already exist. And I saw that across the several, several other projects too. Um, you don't and, have to wait, so, folks. By the way, <laughs> yeah. <Sorry>. So <laughs> one of the things that we're trying to try and do, we're just shifting into gears into this um, mode right now, is to write case studies where we combine the findings across a bunch of projects and just talk in you know fifteen hundred words or something about this particular thing. And I just started that process today, writing about how um, UC Davis uh, SANFS program is um, using badges to. Um, recognize learning across different learning contexts. Yeah, I, and I invited that you in here tonight. Yeah, she said technical right difficulties, okay. unfortunately. Uh, okay, she's good. been having so you trouble all this okay. last month. Yeah. So, uh, you know, another challenge that people come up across, one of the possibilities of badges is that they allow you to recognize new learning that you didn't recognize before, and you can do it across different contexts, but that presents a problem with your assessment where you have to figure out how you're actually going to build assessments that cross those boundaries as well. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, oh, go ahead, Cheryl. I was going to say it's more than assessment, though. It's the, the difficulties of, of, of creating a pathway uh, across institutions is more than just assessment. Yeah, yeah, one of the things I say whenever I talk about just sort of building badge systems is you have all these different moving parts in a badge system, and they're all touching each other and interacting with each other. And there's so many different consequences of, of what your design decisions are that it's hard to predict a lot of that in advance. Cheryl, just to add to what Cheryl was saying, Cheryl mentioned it's not um, to build, it's not just um, assessment to build these type, types of pathways across different badge systems. There's an the reason why that resonates is um, the Open Badges team is also working on a Gates grant um, where we're exploring pathways, discovery of badges, and creating pathways and all that stuff. And I mean, when you're creating pathways, you should be able to easily pick, pick one badge from one badge system and then another badge from another badge system and define and be able to create pathways in a flexible way. A pathway should not just be housed within one organization. Um, just Can to somebody quickly, define pathway for me? I mean, um, as I listen, maybe I'll get it. But Sure. Um, I, please chime in. Um, on my uh, So I guess the way we are defining pathways is um, right now a badge in and of itself um, is, is just kind of one unit of information. Once the badge is earned, a lot of times people, learners, are say, learners go, what next? What do I go ahead and earn next? So trying to help folks define earners define what they what the kind of different kind of pathways and trajectories, and they don't have to be linear. Um, they can be different. They can be provide you know choose your own adventure, have different kind of like bifurcations and all that stuff. But these types of opportunities that lead people to a certain goal that lead people beyond just like this this badge and like stop. That, that help people kind of take figure out what, what to go on to next. That's essentially what a pathway is. I, I, I don't think there's any formal definition of a pathway other than exactly what it is, helping guiding people through their learning trajectory. So I'm a student and I do some work at a museum on the weekend and then I put that, I, I'm on a pathway and I do a project in my science class and those two should be working together in some way. Is that where you were. <laughs> That's they where could, we. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I, th I think we're all tr we're all all rushing to probably say the exact same thing, which is that ideally, yes, those 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 two badges from two individual organizations could could speak to one another, could be seen by by. Uh, one learner or one person, but we're actually not at a point yet where people's where where people can search and discover badges, and really kind of carve out those pathways until we're in until very very recently and and you know I would argue you know we're we're still not we're still not exactly you know there yet so you can't quite figure out what that pathway is and I think in some parts you know that this is that this is um, 
you know, that this is part of this is part of this issue, which is that often people uh, and really depending on when you when you started working with digital badges, you know, you were creating a badge with that was within its own with that was within its own system and not necessarily designed to speak to badges, at, you know, kind of outside. And I think a lot of people did design badge systems. You know, certainly if I think about the New York context, you know, within Hive NYC, we've got a lot of organizations that you know through DML or through other through the DML competition or through through, through other means, you know, began working with digital badges quite early. But those badges aren't necessarily open badges. Those aren't necessarily badges that someone can search. really begin to to build their badge system, um, what they're able to do with it and what they're imagining um, their users and their the badge earners will be able to do is is incredibly different. One of the things I think that's been interesting to me is I talk to people about their ideas or you know it's sort of the potential they see for badging. I guess you know the concept of badging being such an accessible concept, you know, most people can instantly think about Boy Scouts. It's, you know, it's an example that we sort of can start to ground our ideas in at first. <clears throat> but I, one of the things I, I think I notice is because it's such an ex accessible idea, I hear people kind of early in the process, and I think we're all kind of early in the process, especially hearing how, hearing Leah describe how you still can't search them and find them, and you still can't, you know, the pathways are still just, we're just starting to map those pathways. So because the, the badging work is early, I guess I'm surprised to find people saying, sort of like laying down these rules of thumb for badging. And you don't have to have issued a, a, a badge at all to say that a badging ha system has to be X or a badging system has to be Y. So for example, something I hear people say is, you know, students absolutely have to be involved in the design of the badges. That's something that educators a lot of times will put forward as like a rule of thumb. And I think that what's intriguing to me is, <clears throat> the more I read about other pilots or hear about other pilots, so often those rules of thumb are just sort of, you know, you have to cast them aside because, you know, amazing things happen where people have violated what might seem to be, you know, some sort of beginning principles of badging. And so I guess I think badging being such an accessible concept has its pros and cons. And I also think, like, do we... Do we really want to establish rules of thumb if we're mapping opportunities, right? Is there really a wrong way to map opportunities for kids, you know, or map opportunities for students to gain access to higher ed or access to an internship? You know, if, I guess, because I'm hearing people talk about the role of failure, I guess I'm thinking about, you know, how do we conduct safe fail experiments where we're mapping real opportunities and knowing that, you know, to some degree, if we're trying to map opportunities with badging and we're experimenting, then a lot of these are going to fail. But if we're if we're invested in a kind of a good faith effort to unpack success or opportunity or how one learning opportunity suggests others, then I think we are really are in a sphere of like safe fail experiments, and we don't get there if we if we're too quick to put parameters on badging pilots or badging efforts. I, I guess I also, too, about this conversation, I feel like we're at that, I don't know if it's a pain point or if it's exciting or what it is, but the thing that resonated for me in Barry's article about this whole idea of pathways is there has to be some heavy lifting behind the scenes to create some of these bridges. A lot of these human systems don't exist. 
-hmm. So we're not just innovating the technology. We're saying to superintendent of a super of a school district, you know, we're we'd like for you to help us build the ecosystem at this level. So there's a pathway. Because I, I mean, I've earned one-off badges, and it, I can I can't imagine. I mean, I'm more pro and interested in seeing this this ecosystem grow and it's hard it's hard to justify it and it's hard to figure out half like what how does this badge fit into this thing that really is abstract right now for a lot of people I mean that we're so trained to go through school in these thick trunks with lots of uh, um, guides along the way that just coming up with your own stories is not that's just not something that we do so I, I think building these pathways or building I don't know what it is it's like um, all my metaphors are really bad, so I'm just going to stick with the word pathways. But it just seems <laughs> like we have to build these these relations, these human systems ourselves first, and then and then see what the earners are going to do with that. Yeah, I mean, I think I was saying, um, I think a lot of the system is, you know, the whole badge ecosystem is resting on the earners' shoulders right now. They have to use badges to tell their own stories, and you know, if they're presenting them to someone who doesn't know what badges are, it's the earner themselves is responsible for even explaining, you know, what a badge is, as well as what this particular badge means and how it connects to this other one that I earned from a different experience. I mean, I think that I think that there are people who are who are you know, designing systems who are going out and sort of trying to make sure that they're designing something that other people can use, that that, you know, sort of, sort of pre-planning and, um, and really seeking out the people who they know they want, need to value that currency. So, you know, I, I know of organizations that are doing that. They're not building, they're beginning to build a badge, but they're also really going and saying, like, you know, actually, it's these specific schools that, you know, I want my youth, you know, to, to be able to, you know, to go to, and these are the people that I want to be able to understand these badges. And so I think, you know, I think there's a, there's a lot of kind of concern and care on the back end mm -hmm. um, for people who are designing, who are actually, you know, not just leaving it on the shoulders of the earners at this point, um, but really thinking, you know, thinking ahead to who's going to look th look at this badge and and how can that be read? And that's something, you know, again, it's it falls into that gray area of, you know, how much, you know, it. You know, the, just the it, just the aspirational quality to it, whether it's good or bad. I sort of like that distinction. You know that that you've made, Barry. Like it's aspirational. Let's not say it's good or bad. Let's just you know call it what it is. And and I think that's an important part. But I also think that this kind of grassroots work that people have to do and are choosing to do is also really key and also and, and also really interesting. And um, like and it's very it's like analog work. It's not it's not like quick work. It's not it's it's it comes from making real connections with people. And so I just think I think it's interesting that we're you know we're it's pointing back to a certain kind of labor that we you know I think ideally people thought that they wouldn't that they wouldn't have to do. Yeah, and to speak right to that point, um, when we're talking about most of the places we're exploring the impact badges could have in youth learning, let's just remember we're talking about the context usually not always but usually of informal learning spaces, mm -hmm. after school programs, community-based organizations, uh, museums, libraries places where we have intentionally not included forms of assessment. We want to not be school, even if we want to have a learning going on. And we're designed in such a way that bringing in assessment is a challenge to us, whether it's badges or something else, whether it's alternative or not. So just the very nature of bringing in badges means we have to have a whole conversation about what is my new relationship now mm -hmm. like with the time I plan to spend in the program, mm -hmm. with the youth, with giving them feedback, with a system that's going to show others what kind of feedback I've been giving, how the way I'm assessing them relates to my educational objectives for the program. This is a massive conversation and a massive challenge that's disruptive, and it could be very positive within informal learning spaces, and we can't underestimate that. And the badges themselves don't solve the problem. They just create the opportunity to start asking those questions. But if we're not talking about how challenging that is and how it's the way, uh, it's like the beginning of a, spe uh, of a triangle, Right, to disrupt things and try and bring uh, a deeper sense of how we can communicate with youth who we're learning with, but what we think they're learning, to learn what they think they're learning, and to be able to help them value what they're learning so they can share it with sure. others outside of the institution, with or without the badges. Um, we're, we're setting folks up for a false expectation about how challenging it is to do this and how much implementing it successfully isn't just about having the good technology and isn't just about under, understanding badges, but understanding how it's transforming our practices. 
and mm -hmm. whether and we have to re ask ourselves about how do we, we want to um, uh, take on that process within an institution and is it ready? Is what ready? Because is, is an institution ready? So so okay. so yeah. when I worked at Global Kids, we didn't call the youth who came to our programs students. They were youth leaders. And now that I'm at the museum, we often call them students, and they're often set up to look like classrooms. But from the outside world, they're both informal learning spaces, and neither of them give grades, neither of them give out assessments, either formative or summative. And the expectations we have about how youth are learning in our spaces and what they're learning both aligns with the sense that we want them to understand the new skills they have, the new knowledges, the new practices. We want them to be able to communicate them to others. But if we don't have uh, systems in place to reflect with them about what they're learning and help them be critical of it and have them learn what our expectations are, how can they leave with, leave, uh, with that kind of metacognitive ability? So are there examples of um, the informal learning institutions bridging to schools? Because I'm a schools guy, right? And and I, I got I to gotta feel like that, you know, I work with kids who are hard pressed, and it'd be great if they got these badges, you know, at the museums and so forth. But they also need to move on in their school life, right? So there's a good example with um, with PAS PASA, which is the Providence After School Alliance. Uh, also a, invited. Maybe they'll come another time. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, that is a good example. One one example I like from them, and, and this is something that came up in the badges workshop that I really appreciate. There were two women there who came up after the project started, and so they don't have any um, baggage really. And they were talking about how there were a lot of students, and I think this is going to come out a little bit in some of the research that's being done on their project that some of the students didn't even know they were there on their profiles. Like they were issued the badge and they didn't even know what they were or what they were for. Um, but then you can also compare in that same program there was a student who went on to become a freshman. I can't remember the college. It was one that um, the, uh, the PASA program had a relationship with. And this is one of the things I like about that project is that there was a lot of human relationships, human systems already in place. Yeah. And the badges just sort of make that visible. But what I like about this one student, and I can't remember where he was saying it. I think it was a, somebody did a blog post. I think it was their um, their communications team was talking about how he says when he first got the badges, he thought they were silly. And then he got into college and he realized, oh, I've got this evidence that I can share in addition to my transcript. Mm -hmm. So I've got this thing that I actually would like to pull out this specific piece, and it's useful now. So. It was valuable to him when he got into a position when he recognized, and I was thinking about that reading Barry's post that um, you know this idea uh, of kids being able to visualize the value of that. I think is going to be it will need to be hugely mentored um, because you're not going to recognize the value until somebody is going to explain to you what it is. I mean, I think that's true whether it's a grade or or working toward a diploma or talking about college when they're in middle school or whatever, it's, it's, it's very abstract to them. So I, I, I feel like PASA is a good example of what you're, you're talking about with schools. They have, a, you know, they, they have this expand learning opportunity program already within their schools, so they were already bridging informal and formal learning, and then they already had relationships with these colleges so that the badges just kind of fit nicely, but the value had to be really uh, explained, and they say that in their, their project Q&A that's on Haystack, they talk about that, and they talk about that a lot in, in one on one conversations, that you cannot talk enough to your stakeholders um, about this ecosystem you're building. You're really not just explaining it to teachers, and you're not just explaining it to the students, you're explaining it to this, this expanded pathways. One of the questions I have about that, I guess I have a, a I just read a little bit about Providence, and, and one of the things that struck me about it was, the idea that they, they built a badging system over what was, I understand, a, a strong after-school program that already had a level of, like, expert panel assessment, right? And so the idea that, you know, if you were to talk to some of the folks at the infancy of that project, they really wanted to badge sort of the... It was ready-made for badging in the sense that they'd already done the analog work that Leah you know, alluded to. The idea that the badge itself was not going to bring the value. It's the fact that... They, the badge would sort of raise up the strength of their program 
in the sense that they have all this powerful expert assessment that wasn't translating to school, and ban the badges started to help that translation. Um, I also think that, it, but if we're asking the tough questions around, like, what does a badge do for you, then it's, it's really important to look at the diversity of pilots and think about, like, because I was struck by UC Davis's pilot because what they had said was they had really strong student portfolio systems, and actually what they wanted to badge was the social networking activities so they saw more student-to-student -student interaction in their, in their, like, that portfolio system. Well, I mean, those two pilots have such different aspirations that I think we can rush in too quickly and say, you know, there's value in A but not in B. And, and you know, really understanding these as, as kind of living, breathing systems. And when folks are badging the strongest parts of their program, I think that, you know, the badge itself doesn't bring the value. It's, it's the safe-fail experiment on top of a really strong program. And, and UC Davis is not going to do expert panels well because they haven't been invested in expert panels for five years. So I think that we can't want bad systems to be all things to all people immediately. And I, I was thinking that uh, maybe this makes sense to make networks, networks that are already strong visible. And that, that's where badging could happen. You know, mm -hmm. but, but having said that, I'm in the New York City Writing Project, and Joe, you're in a writing project. And can you imagine a badge across writing projects, right? I mean, the negotiation, I can, I can, frankly, I'm not sure I could imagine the New York City Writing Project agreeing. Well, I can, I can imagine it, but it would be a big process, right, to people getting together, kind of figuring out the expectations. Feels like a really valuable process, um, but it's that process and not the badges that's important. Does that make sense? But then, Leah, I, I also within that context, and, and we're in New York here a little bit, right? I just sorry, Joe. Did you want to jump in on that? Sorry. Was, oh no, I mean I think that I guess the thing I would I would first of all I'd accept it if you said that you, you know two writing projects might not agree. At the same time, when you say can I imagine badging across writing projects? I had to when Paul O makes me because he's trying to think about, you know, sort of badging the strengths that he's seen in terms of networked teacher consultants or networked writing project folks who are sort of stepping forward and starting to make these connections that, you know, before the last five years were only happening at conferences. So as, as we're sort of naming some of the promising possibilities inside a network and then those folks on that tip of the innovation are talking about badges, that's where the potential lies, not in the not in the disputes that one writing project in Utah might have with a writing project in Massachusetts. Let's talk about the sweet. But Leah, can you talk a little bit about the um, the is it the Ready group that oh, you've been working um, with with Digital Ready? Sure. Digital Ready, yeah. Sure. Because because that's where you've been doing quite a little yeah, work yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. So. Um, so Digital Ready is, a, is an NYC DOE program. Um, it's out of the Office of Post-Secondary Readiness. And they are finishing up year one of a three-year pilot. And they're really looking at student-centered learning. They're looking at professional development with teachers. Um, and they're looking really specifically at providing out-of-school experiences that can have um, have some resonance during the school day. So not necessarily credit, um, but can be brought back into this into the school, into the school day and, and that work can actually be acknowledged. So what we're doing is so we can, have wait, a can you can, wait, can, can yeah. you break what's that look like? Sorry. So yeah. it's not credit but it's acknowledged in school? Yeah, well I mean as you as you know it's incredibly difficult to get transfer credit within New York City public schools. Yeah. So this isn't this isn't a system that is that is that is transfer credit, but it can be a it can be a system in which the work that was done out of school can be brought into the in school you know e portfolio, or it can be read or acknowledged by the teachers within the school. Okay. So with the with the um, you know sort of like agreement of the principal and looking at the actual looking at that specific work, then that work can be then the then that work can be used towards school credit, but it can't it's it, it's not necessarily like transfer credit that can only really happen in 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 particular types of schools. Um, 
my friends at the DOE could do a much better job of explaining it, but that, that's how I see it. Um, so what we've been doing is we've just been sort of um, working with the organizations within Hive who have been providing the out-of-school experiences to a cohort of New York City high schools. So we have about 18 organizations that um, basically have within their regular after-school programming have a number of students who are from usually their local high schools. So high schools, you know, so we'll have organizations that might have programming in a particular neighborhood. That local high school that's also a part of the Digital Ready program will send youth to that to that program. Um, so the educators on the informal learning side, we've been meeting together and trying to come together and kind of and and come up with a kind of minimum viable prototype of the types of skills that we can agree are happening across these out of school learning experiences that our educators are providing. So we're getting together in the informal learning side of things to badge the work that that youth are doing in our in our space. And that's the work that go that 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 through the digital ready sort of funnel, they're 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 navigating and sort of like mediating this this space for us. So we're badging in the ad, in the informal learning space, and you know for us that has really particular that really has particular um, you know value for us. We're not waiting for the for the in school space to say, oh, okay, we'll take your badges and then we'll we'll see if we can give that credit. We're we're working amongst ourselves and really getting a lot of input, you know, from the from our partners in the DOE about what kinds of feedback and what kinds of assessment and what kind of work people might need to see, what that evidence might look like. But but for for us the most important thing really is developing a currency you know, within the organizations that work together, um, okay. and de and and creating some some value to the badges there. So, uh, my my middle school, and there are too many, and I'm still we're, we're still working. I'm we are still working on this, but um, I imagine a day when my middle school schoolers are going to go down to Dream Yard, which is ge geographically close to my school, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, and go into Dream Yard and say, look, I've got to get this badge. Can you help me do that? Right, so I want to see it go the other way too, and I, you know, I think that might be possible. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, yeah. I, th I mean, I, th I think, I think what you know, what we're trying to do is, is negotiate a particular space, and we're doing it with with organizations that are that are that are obviously interested in sort of like playing um, with schools in a in a particular way, but we also want the badges to have some resonance in in the work that we that we do. So we're developing we're developing badges that you know any organization within within Hive can can issue and buy into if the badge is something that 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 they want to use. But it's also a part of this digital ready program, so it can travel to the to the school and show the work that was that was done in the out of school space. And that's quite a you know that's sort of quite a negotiation for for us, um, you know. But to, but but you know for for me the important thing is that it has that resonance in the in the out of school space and educators in the out of school space are coming together and saying okay what does critical thinking look like in this activity that I'm that I'm putting forward what does communication look like in this activity I'm putting forward how can we come together and and sort of like and decide what what that what those sort of what that skill set looks like that we that we can agree on, um, and that's the kind of buy-in that we need in the informal space in order to have it you know have it have some kind of currency so that it's not just that they're going from middle school but they're going from Dream Yard to AM and H and they have something that that's that someone else can read. So, you know, for you know for us, I think trying to build up the the currency and making sure that it's it's that it. It can be it can be seen and valued in a number of different places. Is really kind of part of is really kind of part of the of of the of the design of the design. So sorry, guys, if we geeked out too much yeah. with New York City here, but but that example I think is really interesting. Um, but uh, to my ears, I, it's, Sunny, I, we have not had a, a big chance to talk about um, badge kit. But can you, and I was in an earlier uh, webinar that you guys are giving, can you let people know where they can learn more about it? Sure, um, I'll, but, I'll but can, can I also be a little provocative about that too? Like sure. I think, I, I, I'm not convinced, I mean you know, well you maybe don't know, but I, 
I've played around with various badge badging systems and you know have felt most comfortable with P2PU, but um, I'm not convinced the technology is up to the to what we to the theory yet. But so there's a, there's your challenge, is it? Um, I I mean I, I I agree in that you know what one of the questions that you brought up during the webinar today was can a learner issue a badge? Um, badge kit right now does not support that. Um, right now, badge kit admittedly is an evolution of the work that we did for the city of Chicago and all the tools that we built to support that citywide initiative. So it's intended to help larger organizations with the goal of extending access, widening access down the road. Mm -hmm. um, at this moment in time, it is. You're absolutely right, and I think what the point that you made resonated strongly. Um, Paul mentioned during our webinar. Um, the, the way to get students, earners on board very quickly and get them a, and um, help them grasp the idea of badges quickly is for them to go ahead and start creating badges themselves. And at this moment in time, the tool does not support that. We are working towards that. Um, I, put, I put a link in the chat um, for, you to, for you to check out. The badge um, so kit is still quite exciting. So go ahead. Can you, how, could, how could people connect with it if they wanted to? Sure. Um, at this moment in time, we're in private beta. That means that um, the access is somewhat limited. We are working with select partners at this moment in time to kind of work out the kinks and um, further develop up the features to make them more robust with the intended goal of uh, widening out the, ac the, the access in phases. Um, we have a bunch of webinars to help people, um, you know, get a to get help people see what, what the features available are. Um, also, you know, all the development work is done in the open, so you can check out the user experience wireframes, the UI wireframes, um, staging environments that are part of Badge Kit, so that you can, so that all that process is very transparent. Um, and I'd be happy to talk to any of you if you have any questions about it. Cool. Um, and would anybody else like to address the like if you wanted to start badging, uh, what platforms or is there a place to go look for that that list somewhere? Yeah, here I'll post a list of of platforms that are currently out there in the um, uh, Titan Pad chat in just a moment. But um, there are some. I mean, Badge Kit is is definitely intended for um, uh, you know, like really large issuers who are able to have their own front end website that is very well like API um, and, you know, API enabled. Um, there are some some badge systems for you know, individuals and small groups that have a lower barrier to entry right now, um, including the, you know, like Achievery is the one that I've used to just sort of go on and issue some one-off badges for people who. Um, you did something at a, at a conference event I had. And um, the, that sort of thing is also really useful for a small-time pilot project. And then once you get to the point where you're issuing enough badges that you want to do it in a more automated fashion, then it's probably worth you know building bigger and better tools than that. All right. So we are um, out of time. Uh, you guys have been kept checking your watches here. But uh, could, could we go around and get kind of uh, your thoughts at this point, and we'll let each other go in a second. Do you mind starting that off, Barry? <laughs> oh, again? Okay. I don't know. It's alphabetical. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, I, first, I have to say thank you again, Paul, for bringing this all together. I think we, we can't have enough conversations like this. These are uh, brilliant minds and people doing incredible work. Uh, who you brought together, and we keep we need to keep having these conversations. I think being able to balance the aspirational, what we hope for badges, with the challenges we're experiencing on the ground, and being honest about both uh, is what we need to keep moving this conversation forward in a way that will allow us to move towards those aspirations. So I appreciate that. Um, uh, something short that I wrote helps to inspire part of this call, but more importantly, I just hope to be part of these conversations moving forward and learning from others. Joe. Did we help or not? <laughs> oh, yeah, always help. And I think that the idea that, I guess, that Barry's post, which I've only skimmed, suggests is that the... It's not that long, guys. Come on. There's, no, yeah, exactly. I'm just teasing. I'll start it while we're in the conversation. <laughs> no, but I, I think that the idea that the that there doesn't need to be any tension around, around like, questions around badging. The idea that this the badging ecosystem doesn't need to be an echo chamber where everyone agrees, and that, you know, 
if we can respect that pilots that might seem to be half thought out actually might bear some fruit because learners do find opportunities, etc. So if we can if we can not squash badge pilots but still keep the uh, the critical conversations going, I think that's just important, especially where this movement is right now. Leah, you're next on the alphabetical list too. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I really like the, the kind of direction that our conversation took, and I think this idea that, um, you know, we're right at that, we're, we're right at that moment, um, you know, where, the, where the, the aspiration and the technology are all sort of uh, coming together, and I do think um, this idea of, of, you know, the aspiration with what's happening um, on the ground and kind of balancing that and then... And, and voicing it becomes really becomes really important. So, um, yeah, I mean, I th I think you know it's there's a good deal of skepticism um, that a lot of people bring into badges, and I think people often think that it's just it's just you know optimism <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know rose colored glasses. But you know, I think I think people who've been working with this for for quite a while understand it as an emerging technology, and also understand that there's a lot of talking that happens around helping un people understand something when mm -hmm. um, you know when those when those tools aren't always aren't always readily available. So um, I think that I think recognizing that talking isn't always the worst thing, and that yeah, obviously we want prototypes, we want things that we can play with, we want sandboxes. Um, but that 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 the conversation is really is really important, and and the more honest it is, and the more um, I think kind of critical it is, the the better. So Nate, hey Sonny, you said you have to catch a bus. You want to go first? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. And, or Sonny, just go. It's yeah, whatever you go. Need to do. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I do have to catch a bus soon. Um, thank you so much, Paul, for um, sure. gathering us. Um, this is my second TTT, and um, you know, both that I've joined have been really, really rich. I've actually I lost track of time. I think we all did. We have a lot to say. I think I agree with Leah. Keeping the on, I it's it's you know I have to keep myself in check. I totally drank the Kool Aid. I believe in badges, but um, what um, what Barry said, keeping the being balancing the aspiration with aspirational with the challenges on the field, I think that's absolutely critical. And I think this this um, group of people that's gathered here here to provide, you know, the provide both aspirational as well as a realistic view of the challenges that people are facing. Um, so I appreciate it and thank you so much and I'm gonna drop Thanks, off Sunny. to catch my bus. See thank you, you all. Good. Bye Sunny. Bye. Thanks. Bye, you guys. Sure, yeah. Uh, thanks, Paul, for inviting me back. Um, it has been an, another great conversation. I like geeking out about badges any day of the week. Um, I think with this technology, what initially drew me to it and what keeps me working with badges is that there there is a lot to get excited about, about what is possible to do with them. Um, and, you know, as, as we mentioned over and over today, the challenges are real, and they are, you know, they come up... Uh, very frequently, um, and you know, I think it is you know conversations like this, and I'm excited to say that we do have some forthcoming research that will will help surface some of those challenges, and and hope, you know, uh, we don't say that we build best practices, but we try and help people find practices that will fit well with the the context they have and the goals they're trying to pursue. Great, and Cheryl, you get um, last word. <laughs> I, I, you know, I really like the metaphor of email, the introduction and spread and adoption of email. Mark Zerman talked about this a little bit. I think we're at that point now where we're, you know, we don't see where this is going, but I think it's, I mean, I, I feel like it's, I have to say what has really surprised me are the, are the people who are getting involved in the conversations. Um, it's just across the ecosystem, and I... I, I feel skeptical because I know how difficult it is just to try and collaborate with one other institution, one small part of one other institution. You know, I think anybody who's done that knows that that's difficult. But I also have seen things that I just never thought would happen. So I, I feel email is the metaphor that I'm hanging on to. That you know, there's probably a point where there were I, I've heard this about on, on university campuses, which can be very medieval in their adoption of, of technology. I've heard that um, you know pr professors would say, "I don't need to. I've got mail. I've got things. People come and walk into my office and talk to me face to face. I'm not adopting. I'm not going to write an email in Pine um, and, and look at them now." 
So I, <laughs> I guess I, I use that as my metaphor because it makes it feel like this work is is building towards something that that's that has that kind of ubiquity. Great, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, and I was really impressed from right from the beginning about how often people talked about how this is about talking with people you wouldn't otherwise have conversations with. So it's at least worth that. Thank you all for having this conversation. Um, I'd like to say at the end that we were founded back uh, eight years ago or so at um, edtechtalk.com, which is a channel of the World Bridges Network um, that was started by Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier. So thank you all for tonight. Good night. Thanks, Paul. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Paul.